Cue the cheesy podcast music. <laughs> Welcome to Mega Fest, where we don't just manifest, we Mega Fest. I'm your host, Megs Malloy. I'm creating a community of silly and soulful working moms who are mostly happy, but know they're capable of more, more self-love, more self-esteem, more self-trust, more calm, joy, natural highs, more magic in the world, and more laughter. Each week, me and my guests will bring you tips and tricks on how to make the most of your one precious life. And we're gonna make them effective and efficient because ain't nobody got time for that. I believe in you. I see the light in you. I want you to shine your light. I want you to become all that you're capable of. So let's hang out. Let's mega fest together. Yeah! Episode 15. Yes! I am feeling fired up today because this is going to be my most vulnerable episode yet. You are in store, my friends, for some real emotional exposure. (laughs) Yeah! All right, so let's just get right into it. But before we do, I want to let you know the word of the day, because for me, this one hits home. The high school that I went to, an all-girls Catholic school, had a three-word motto. We were to live by these values, and it was love, hope, and the word of the day, zeal. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why the the WWE wrestler is coming out in me today, but I am zealous. Zeal, of course, is great energy or enthusiasm in the pursuit of a cause or an objective. Now you can be a zealot, you can be zealous, and you can have zealousness, I think, too. <laughs> We're going to keep it fresh over here at MegaFest. Today's episode is all about what I consider to be alignment. Now, when I was doing a little bit of internet research, it is possible that maybe I'm using the wrong word. Maybe alignment isn't what I'm talking about at all, but I don't know any other word for it. So (laughs) feel free to send me your suggestions. So today I would like to share with you a couple of examples of times when I realized I was not in alignment with myself and how it made me feel and then what I did to get back into alignment. I think this is going to be really helpful for you because we all have times when we feel like, eh, that didn't quite go how I thought it was. Why am I so disappointed? or you know something to that effect. And it is really helpful to identify when you are not in alignment and know how to get yourself back into alignment. So we're gonna do that today with zeal. Oh yeah. So I have two examples of when I was out of alignment. They both involve this guy at the gym who was a total guy you would think you would see at the gym. He just had like muscles out to here. And his neck was like huge and he's an ex-cop. He makes knives for a living. Like, need I say more? He's pure testosterone. (laughs) I'm not trying to hate on guys with testosterone or muscle. Like, this is not about that. It's just about this guy or just about me. This is a story about me. Let's just put it like that. Before I get started today... I have to tell you, this is a very vulnerable episode for me. And the reason it is vulnerable is because I have a major fear that you will judge me for the things that I am saying. I either have to not say it or be okay with you judging me and hope that you don't. (laughs) Please don't judge me. Please love me for my vulnerability. So homeboy at the gym, let's call him 
fuck it. Let's just call him by his name because he's never going to hear this. And even if he does, like, it's not about him. Okay. This guy, Sean at the gym, who's got the muscles. So there were two times when I had conversations with him and they just threw me completely out of alignment. So here's example number one. And oh, so begins the vulnerability. Oh, okay. It's okay. Okay. So a little bit of a side note, I do not talk about politics, just my policy. When I was in outside sales, some of my clients would try to bring stuff up and I'm not having it. I just nod my head. I say, oh, okay. Yeah. Gosh. Uh-huh. I, I reserve my political statements for my inner, inner circle. If, if I do even make political statements, because I don't watch the news. I don't keep up on current events because it's like... I'm a very sensitive person. And for me, I feel like I, I don't really need to be emotionally stressed like that on the daily. The only time it came to bite me in the ass was when I wasn't watching the news and I didn't realize that children's medicine was in shortage and my children got very sick and I went to the store <laughs> to get the medicine and there was none. I didn't see this coming. So that definitely bit me in the ass. But 364 days out of the year, it makes me a better person. So that's just me. You be you. That's me. Don't talk politics. Don't keep up on current events. So I was thinking about changing the details instead of telling you what it, the political conversation was actually about. I was going to make it about like dogs versus cats. But I think I'm just going to be vulnerable and I'm just going to tell you. And you can disagree with me if you want. If I lose a listener... I'm sorry, but <laughs> I hope you appreciate me for my zeal for being honest. Okay, I think we've gotten all the disclaimers out of the way. So it's Sunday morning. I'm there, the only woman at the gym. There's Sean and this other guy, Dean, who I'm very fond of. He's very funny and outgoing and uh, keeps it light. So Sean is telling Dean, like bragging to him about he was at church a couple weeks ago and approached the priest after the mass and said, hey, man, why are you like basically like, hey, man, why are you a baby killer? <laughs> <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's it's just I mean, you know, you don't you don't need to be doing that. And uh I I mean I don't think that that needs to happen, but he's apparently like comfortable with confrontation and he made the priest admit to the whole congregation that he was pro choice. And Sean was like, you know, you call yourself a Catholic? You're you're not a Catholic. You're a imposter or whatever he was doing. He was like creating this drama for, you know, a reason he thought was a good reason. But I was kind of like, okay, well, you don't really need to be like, that's not very nice or very Christian, but whatever. Those are Those were just the thoughts going through my head at the time, you know. I understand all points of view. We have to have, you know, some sort of conflict. But, you know, he could have talked to him in private. He could have. So I'm just like doing my thing, which is listening from afar, like silently judging Sean. And then Dean looks over at me and is like, you're keeping very silent. You're just working out. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just working out over here while you guys are making choices for women's bodies. And I said something political. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I got a little zealous. And after I left the gym, I was so perturbed with myself. My nervous system was ramped up and I didn't feel good. I guess you could say I was out of alignment. That's that's the thing that we're we're kind of going over today. Is that being out of alignment? I think so, because it was not in alignment with my identity that I had for myself. Where I am a person who does not talk about politics in 
in public. So I felt very out of alignment. And, you know, I was even feeling upset about it the next day. (laughs) And that's when I knew, like, what is going on here? What happened? Okay, let's time out. What's happening? So I first tried to calm my nervous system down. And then I asked myself, what is it about this that is bothering me so much? And come to find out the answer is my actions were not in alignment with my identity. My identity is somebody who just keeps neutral on all things in public. And then I had to rectify in my head, what would I have done different? If I was acting in full alignment with my values and my identity, what would I have done? So I came up with a better option. If I felt like I needed to say something, I could have said, oh, so are you in full support of paid maternity leave or free childcare for all working moms? Or I could have just said nothing. (laughs) And then the last step, I just had to forgive myself for stepping out of alignment and congratulate myself for trying to get back into alignment and really examining what was what were the missteps what could i done have done different so fast forward a couple weeks later of course i'm back at the gym cuz that's kind of my thing so at this point i realized that my energy and Sean's energy don't really jive but he's there almost every time i'm there so we got to live together you know we got to <laughs> coexist in this space so i'm doing my best to be friendly. He was done with his workout. He was talking to my friend and trainer who was helping me with my workouts. And here's Sean and he's like, I don't know how, but we started talking about co-sleeping. Why were we talking about co-sleeping? That's so random. But (laughs) I think I made the comment, oh, I don't sleep with my husband, you know, separate bedrooms. That's the secret to a happy marriage. If my kids wake me up, that's okay. But if my husband wakes me up, like, oh, hell no. And he's like, no, that's not right. You're doing it wrong. Like, you know, telling me I'm doing it wrong. And like, oh, my bedroom is the love nest. And I'm like, okay, well, that's great for you. You know, in my head, I'm thinking like, that's great for you. (laughs) That's not my style. But he was very confrontational and very like, very black or white about the issue. And his way was the right way. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not my style. Everybody be you and whatever makes is good for you, you do that. If you want to ask me what I'm doing because you think that I've got it going on, then you come ask me and I will tell you. But otherwise, you do you as long as you're not hurting anybody. But not according to Sean. Everything has to be his way. His way is the right way. So that wasn't the end of it. Then I went and did my set. I came back and they were still talking. And the trainer friend and myself were talking about how old were we when we got married and how old were we when we started having children. And Jeff, the trainer, was like, oh, I was 25 when I got married. And I was like, man, that was so young. When I was 25, I was out living my life. I was out getting STDs. (laughs) Which is not true. Why did I say that? And then I I turned to Sean and I was like, you know what though? Actually, would you believe I was a 23-year-old virgin? That is true. I was a 23-year-old virgin. And, And Jeff was like, go work out. Come on. And um, I just, I was like, I feel so out of alignment. And this time I was so out of alignment because I was saying things about myself that one, weren't true. And two, that's not the story I want to be telling about myself. So again, I had to quickly figure all the of this out when I realized like, ugh, ugh, that made me feel icky. I didn't like that. And why? So calm my nervous system down. Okay, Megan, you're going to be okay. What just happened? And it was bothering me because one, those things aren't true. And two, why would I say something like that about myself? Why would I badmouth myself? Why would I tell my story in a bad light like that? 
I was trying to be funny. I was trying to impress this guy. But instead, I was just kind of putting myself down a little bit. So what would I have done different? Well, I could have said, I was out having fun. I was going around the world traveling. I was wearing fabulous outfits and throwing fabulous parties. <laughs> All of those things were true. And I just really had to forgive myself for saying that and also congratulate myself on saying, okay, Megan, good job recognizing that you don't want to be saying things like that. And we're going to move forward, remembering the lesson from this experience. And to me, it really goes back to your identity and knowing what are your values? What do you love about yourself? What truths do you know to be self-evident about yourself? It's really, it's a great journaling exercise, but I'm sure that you could answer a couple things about yourself just right off the bat. Like, I am a kind person. I am an outgoing person. I live in harmony. <laughs> like, those are all things that I value and I love about myself. Nowadays, I can say I'm a person who sets healthy boundaries. And as we know, a healthy boundary is simply letting someone know how you want to be treated. Thank you, Alyssa. If you want to live in alignment, it's really important to know who you are. What are your values? What are you good at? What lights you up? How do you bring joy and light to the world? And all of this is awareness, right? Being aware of your identity. And if you don't like something, change, change it about your identity. That's a whole nother episode right there. But then also being aware of what's happening in your body when you have these confrontations. And what can you do different? Maybe awareness should have been the word for today, but really I have so much zeal for this, for this topic. Whew. Well, I survived a vulnerable moment. I hope you're still listening. Thank you for loving me, even though we may not align politically, but you will almost never hear me talk about politics on this episode ever again. I hope listening to this episode makes you feel in alignment and is helping you to get closer to your true identity. And while we're on the topic, why don't you add zealot to your identity? If you have a zeal for life, you cannot go wrong. I have so much zeal in my heart for you and I'm so grateful to share this time with you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about the upcoming episodes that we're gonna be doing. There's some cool interviews coming up in February. So make sure that you are subscribed. And if you're not getting the Soulgasm Society emails, go to my website, get that shit in your life, girl. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where these noises come from. They just come out of me. It's uh, the zealousness is out of control. But this is what we do, right? We're not just manifesting. We are mega-festing. 